This dogman sighting comes out of Ottertail County, Minnesota from 2009. The witness states that he had never believed in any of these type of creatures. Now with that said, in early 2009, he saw something that really disturbed him, leading him to change his mind. He says that he was not under the influence of any kind of drug and that he has better than average eyesight, saying that when the sighting happened, it was nearly sunset, but stating that he could still see clearly. He says that he was at his mother-in-law's and that she lives out in the country about three to four miles out of Fergus Falls, that he was staying there while his wife had gone shopping with her mother. Now he says they called him and asked if he wanted to go to a seven o'clock movie with them. So he left the house around 6.30 to 6.45 to go meet them at the theater. That he got about two miles from the house that he was on a country road known as Wendell Road, that it ran along a river. When he saw three deer, two of which were just yearlings, while the third was a large doe, which he assumed was their mother, saying that him being a avid hunter and lover of wildlife, and that he was becoming a future wildlife biologist, that he decided to stop and look at the deer he said that he should mention that he has hunted and lived in this area all of his life. He said that the deer were following a small creek bed. The witness said that there wasn't hardly any trees in this area when he noticed this one tree. Maybe because he didn't notice it when he first got there. Now looking at the tree, the witness noticed something crouching down beside of it that this tree was about 40 yards from him on the same side of the road where he was sitting in his truck. He says that this creature was looking and hunting the deer, saying that it just sat there watching the deer, paying him or his truck any attention. He says that he had a clear view of this thing, that there wasn't any obstruction of his view at all. He states while watching this thing, that it had its hand on the tree, as if it was bracing itself with it. Now what struck him as being shocking was that the creature seemed to be a two-legged creature. He also noticed that this thing had opposable thumbs. At least it appeared that way to him, while they looked to be thin and long. Now he says that if this creature was to have stood upright, that it would have been over seven foot tall. Saying that this creature also had a rather protruding muzzle, while with broad shoulders leading down to a slender waist, also having thick muscular thighs. The witness said due to the snow on the ground that he didn't see its lower legs or feet. The witness said that after several seconds of sitting there watching this thing, that the deer just took off like they had noticed the creature. Maybe they caught it scent or something. And while he was still looking at this creature in total shock, something amazing happened. This creature turned and looked right at him, as if this thing blamed him for scaring away the deer. Still, he just sat there looking at him. At this point, the witness said that this scared the crap out of him. So he punched the gas and drove off. So he went on to the movie. Now the witness said that it was very dark after the movie. So he didn't feel like walking through three foot of snow to see if he could find any evidence of this creature. Not with the possibility that there was a monster lurking around waiting on a meal. So he says that he waited until 10 a.m. the next day to go back where he walked down to the tree. He says that under the tree there was no snow, while seeing no tracks around the tree, but that he found three tracks leading up to the tree, which was hard black dirt. 
he says that if you know what a Minnesota field looks like in late winter or early spring, that you would know what he meant. Now he said that the track he found looked canine, but had four toes, and was very big, six to seven inches. So that was a nice sighting report. This dogman sighting comes out of Iowa from July the 1st of 2014. The witness said that he was a deputy sheriff for Lynn County, that he recalls that January the 1st, that a young man around 16 or 17 was sucked down a storm drain, which emptied into Cedar Lake near the Quaker Oats plant there. This area has a lot of foot traffic while being in an urban setting, with the area also being bordered by the Mohawk Park. As the search went on for the boy into the night, that the local PD asked for the county's help. When he was dispatched to the area, saying that he parked his cruiser at what he believed to be an electric company storage yard. Now, the witness said that the yard had what he estimated to be a 10-foot fence around it, and that on the other side of the yard was a paved bike trail, while a large concrete spillway that siphons off the floodwaters was next to that. Now, he says that he arrived there between 11.30 and 11.45 that night. At least that's what he estimated saying that he estimated because there was never and nor will be a official statement on the record about what happened to him. That there is no way that he would file such a report with his name on it. Now he says that he was on the north end of the lake, heading west on foot. That there was a lot of brush in between the spillway and the trail he was on. So he continued on while scanning the brush until he came to where the trail starts heading south. This is the area that Cedar Lake empties into the Cedar River, just under the railroad tracks leading into Quaker Roads. And there are multiple tracks at the turn he mentioned. He says only the track furthest away from him had a train on the tracks. Now he says that with his focus being on the spillway, that he barely noticed a faint red colored light at a good distance north of his position. He says that he thought that this was maybe tail light from a car, but not knowing the patrol area that well, he didn't know that there wasn't a road in that area at the time. Now the witness said, there isn't much out there that scares him in this world. That while doing this job, he has seen some shit in his days. But that nothing could have prepared him for what he was about to experience this night. Now he says that as he was scanning the area, that he noticed that the light had disappeared. And figured that was that. Saying that about five minutes or so had passed, when he started hearing a loud snorting, almost sniffing sound, which seemed to be coming from the other side of the tracks. Now, as he turned to see what was making the sound, the first thing he says he saw was this thing's eyes, stating that they glowed a dull red. Now, the witness says that he is six foot four and weighs 280 pounds, but this creature was at least eight foot tall and 450 pounds. He says that at this time he turned his light onto the creature, and that to this day he wishes that he hadn't, saying that this creature had pointed ears on top of its head as this creature was looking right at him. He noticed that the creature also had a long snout. He says after this creature stood there looking at him, it just turned and bolted back into the timberline. Now the witness said, as he took a step back to the trail, that he pulled his Glock from his holster, 
He says that he just remembers how surreal this moment was to him. Saying that he knows what's in the dark now. He says that people can think whatever they want about what happened to him at night. That even though he had his Glock 40 in his hand with a full magazine, he really didn't feel like he even had enough firepower. Not to stop a creature like that. He says he started back to his cruiser. That he was sure that he didn't reholster his Glock until he was out of the trees and away from the path. Now he says that he's no longer with the sheriff's department. That he became a minister. But if he has to go out at night, that he still carries his Glock 40 with him. With a clip of hollow point bullets. And that if these bullets is tipped with silver. So wow, he became a minister. I wonder if it was due to his sighting. Just knowing that there are evil things out there in this world. Things that can't be explained sometimes. Creatures that just remains to be endless mysteries. With every sighting comes a new answer. While bringing many more questions. So I hope you enjoyed this sighting. This dogman sighting comes out of Idaho. From February of 2008. The witness says that it was early morning around 3.15 when his sighting happened, saying that he saw what only could be described as a dog man, that this creature was walking down the Greenbelt in Boise. He says that if you want to be more specific, the area would be Garden City, that the sighting happened near the Veterans Parkway Bridge saying that for people not familiar with the area, that the Boise River runs through downtown Boise and Garden City. Now he says that the Greenbelt is a walking and biking path that follows the river. He says that he had came out of his house. He needed to scrape the ice off of his car windows so that he could be to work at 4 a.m. While scraping his windows, he realized that it had went eerily quiet. He says he looked up at this point. He had just thought to scan the area real fast. Just to make sure because it wasn't normally for it to be this quiet. While scanning, he says he saw something walking down the Greenbelt towards the Veterans Parkway Bridge saying that this creature looked to be over seven feet tall, that this thing was huge. Now, as he was watching this creature walk down the green belt, that it turned its head and looked right at him. With these neon green colored glowing eyes, unlike anything he had ever seen before. At this time, the witness said that he said out loud, Oh my God. After this creature looked at him for a couple of seconds, the witness said that it just turned its head back and kept walking down the path, saying that this creature was walking slowly, even after they looked at each other. This thing never hurried or seemed to be startled by him, saying that he was frozen where he stood, that the fear he felt just stopped him from moving that he kept watching this thing until it vanished behind a building that is next to the bridge. Now the witness said as he stood frozen in fear that he could only watch this creature. He says that this thing had dark brown fur all over its body. That he also noticed this creature had weird shaped legs saying that it also had pointed ears that seemed to be on top of its head, while also having a large snout. He also noticed that this creature had a tail. Now the witness said that after this creature went out of sight, that he figured that the creature just kept going under the bridge. 
Now the witness said that this section of the green belt is on a dead end street, while having a couple of businesses and a few parking lots, that all of the parking lots has street lights in them. That this helped him to see this thing as well as he did. Now the witness says that he never seen it again after that one night. So I hope you like this sighting report. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. So you can keep up with all of our newest videos. This dogman sighting comes to our channel by email. The witness wants to remain anonymous, which is always okay with me. He says that this sighting happened in September of 2019. Now, not to give too much away about the witness, he said that he lives in Canton, North Carolina, saying that it was late, but him and his wife just wanted to get out of the house for a while. So they thought they would take a late ride on the parkway. That it was about midnight or so. That they have done this many times, saying that they both work third shift, and that this time is more like their daytime hours to most other people. That they both had the night off, which doesn't happen that often, he said. So they thought they would just drive and maybe find a pullover and watch the stars. As they were driving through the mountains, they came to a pull-off and got out of the car. While watching the stars, they started to hear coyotes howling and yipping off in the distance. Now, by this time, it was about 3 a.m., and they thought that they better start heading home. After just a few miles heading home is when their sighting happened. A large buck had jumped out in front of them. The witness says that he slammed on his brakes and that they slid to a stop. This is when a large wolf, man-like thing, walked in front of their car. The witness said he was checking on his wife, making sure she was okay. When she looked up and screamed, he jumped and looked in the direction she was looking. He says he saw a creature that stood or towered over the car. He says that the creature had to be at least seven to eight feet tall while having a massive upper body. He says that you could see the muscles working under its hair as it was moving. That this thing's head was slightly larger than it needed to be, at least compared to its body. The muzzle or snout was long. The creature, he said, had large canines as well that they had to be three and a half to four inches long. He said it had the biggest teeth he had ever seen on an animal, saying maybe he's never been as close to any other predator as he was to this day. He says it finally got to the other side of the car. He says that the creature's legs were muscular as well, but they still seemed small for the rest of its body. Seeing as he tries to picture it now, that the legs were strong looking and off in a way, more dog like than human, he said. Now moving back to its head, the ears were standing up on its head like a German shepherd's or husky ears. He says that he was terrified at this point and that his wife was hollering, maybe screaming that he was in kind of a daze at this moment, that everything just started to blend together. Maybe it was just a fear that was pouring over his body at the time, that this creature had feared him and his wife so bad, he couldn't think straight and she couldn't stop crying and screaming. Once the creature had made it to the other side of the road, he noticed that it was a darker brown with hints of gray or silver in places. It finally made its way back into the woods. While well, he thinks he was still in shock from what he saw, he was just sitting there. Finally, his wife grabbed him and said, let's go. 
At this time, he says that he kind of snapped out of shock and started home, saying that his wife was still crying when they got home, that they spent the rest of the night talking about what had happened to them. His wife said that she didn't see that much, that she says that she saw a werewolf and that she covered her eyes, thinking that this thing was going to eat them. The witness says that he's sure that the creature was after the deer that jumped out in front of them, that they both crossed the road within seconds of each other, that this sighting felt like it lasted 10 to 20 minutes, but was probably 10 to 20 seconds, but that everything slowed down and that he could see everything about this creature in that time. I said, this sighting was sent to me by email, and if anyone else out there would like to share their sighting, please drop me an email at thoseendlessmysteries at outlook.com, and I'll try to get to your story as fast as I can. I hope you like this sighting report. This dogman sighting report consists of three different sightings by the same witness. The witness says that he has had three different sightings with three different preachers over the years. He says that when he was younger, that he saw a creature that looked like a wolf or a large German shepherd on its hind legs, that it was running through a thick patch of woods. He says the sighting only lasted for a second or two, but that he can still remember its long muzzle and that it had pointed ears. He says that he can distinctly remember all this. Now the witness says that the second encounter was more exciting, stating that it was late at night, that the family had had a small barbecue party at his uncle's farm, that the farm was just miles from Ann Arbor. He says that he was coming out of the barn to get some more food when all of a sudden he heard sticks breaking, saying that the sounds came from his right just inside the tree line. His first impression was that one of the dogs had gotten out, so he went to check out and see if this was the case. So he was walking towards the sound. Now he says that he remembers hearing the creature flinch. Now I don't really get how you hear a creature flinch, but I'll go with it, and that the movement stopped as he approached. Now he says that while peering into the trees that he called out for the golden retriever. Now he said that the barn had spotlights that faced the house, that with the house being painted white, that it just gave off a nice glow that made it easier to see. Now he said that he noticed a muzzle poking out of the trees, that this muzzle was about seven feet off the ground. Then following the muzzle out of the tree line was a full figure of this creature, and that it was only about 20 feet away from him. So he says that he got the full picture of this thing, stating that this thing was tall and lean, but very muscular, that it also had a distinct brown pelt on its body while having blackish looking fur on its shoulders, that the paws on this creature's feet were huge, but that it looked to have fingers on its hands, almost human looking if it wasn't for the fur, not to mention its claws on them. Now the witness said that the most scariest thing about the creature was its head. The witness said that this creature looked like it was snarling. But the witness thinks that this creature might have been trying to smile. But with its huge canines, if it was trying to smile, you wouldn't be able to notice it over the fear in your heart. The witness said that he didn't see what color its eyes were. Now he says as the creature came into full view that he said to himself, werewolf, 
This is when the witness said he started to back up slowly, but that the creature just stood there watching him and looking like a proud hunter that just took down its prey. He says that this sighting seemed to have lasted about 30 minutes, but that maybe 30 seconds was more like it. Now his father, uncle, cousin, and grandfather came out of the barn. Now this creature just took off. That when he saw this thing run, he meant that it ran. It turned and dropped to all fours and leaped back off into the tree line, making only a slight noise. The witness said that he told his cousin what he had seen, but that he didn't believe him. He didn't tell his father because he said, that his father didn't believe in this kind of stuff and that he wouldn't have believed him anyway. Now as for the third sighting, the witness said it happened in his own backyard. That one night the same type of creature knocked on his window. He says that he had his curtains drawn to give him a view of the woods. That he lives in a patch of woods next to a fire road. He says that he was having trouble getting to sleep this night, that he really didn't know how to explain or describe it, that it was just an uneasy feeling. As he was lying there trying to get to sleep, that he heard a slight scraping sound, which appeared to be coming from the wall of his house. Just below his window, he said, he says that his window is about eight feet off the ground. He says at this time he sit up in the bed that he was going to see what was going on. When he looked out the window that he could only see what appeared to be the head of a werewolf. Just looking into his window, which is only about 10 feet from his bed. He says he cursed and jumped out of bed while grabbing a survival machete that he kept in his closet. He turned to see if this creature was still there, but that it had already disappeared. Now the next day the witness said that he went outside and looked all over that area to see if he could find any evidence of this creature being there, but that he didn't find a thing. For about a day the witness said he was unsure of himself. Wow, now I think I would have been as well. See something like that and just no sign of it? Yeah, I'd be a little bit off too. So what did you think about this sighting? Drop me a comment down below and let me know. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you can keep up with all of our latest videos. This dogman sighting comes out of Rapid Parish, Louisiana. From June of 1987, it's an older sighting, but a good one. The witness states that he was 14 years old living in central Louisiana at the time of his sighting, stating that his mother had always been interested in the paranormal, that she would buy magazines and watch documentaries on everything from UFO, Bigfoot, Loch Ness, monsters, and so on. So he says that he just grew up interested in these things as well. That he believed in them, but still only took it at face value. He says that he lived in a mobile home park, which was on a two-lane highway. Highway 28 East, to be exact. Saying that it was a long street, but ending in a cul-de-sac type of bed end. On the left was the only brick home in the park that the kids of the park had a kind of club where they all would gather to hang out or whatever, which was a thin patch of woods that they had found some old chairs and placed in. He says that he had went out to figure out where to move the club, that they wanted to get further in the woods past a big ditch that there were a string there 
with hills on the sides, while an enormous oak tree had fallen next to the stream. He says that he spotted an old metal table down next to the stream, and he went to check it out. Thought it would be nice with the chairs that they had found. So he went down and inspected it. It was in good shape, so he thought he would come back tomorrow and get it. So he headed home. The next morning, he headed back to get the table he had seen. When he got to the fence, which you had to duck to get under, the fence was bent at the bottom. So when he went to duck under the fence, he heard a distant sound of sniffing. So he turned to see what was making the noise. When he saw on the other side of the creek a creature that was standing there sniffing the air, he says it was seven to eight feet tall with its head turned slightly. The first thing that went through his mind at the time was, oh my God, werewolves are real. He said that the creature stood on two powerful built legs. You could see the muscles upon the legs and ending with enormous paws. Well, it had no tail, it did have a massive chest as well as a very muscular arms and hands. Well, it looked to have hands, but with what looked to be pads on them. But he said that they were arranged differently than a canine's would be. The witness said that it had a wolf-type head and was very tall. It had a canine muzzle or snout, whichever you call it, it says. While it also had pointed ears that was standing straight up, while having reddish, glowing eyes, he says, that this creature kept sniffing the air as it stepped over an old tree stump. Now he says that he would have probably had to climb over the tree stump. Well, it just took one step over it. As he thought that this creature was starting to come after him, then suddenly it stopped and was breathing harder, panting but it had a deepness to it, a rumble even, that accompanied it. At this point, he ran back to the road where his bike was and went home. He says he never went back into those woods again. Soon after, he says his family moved to Mississippi, where he never knew of the dogman till coming across stories on the internet. He says that with his encounter that he started down a path of fascination with ancient myths, legends, werewolves, and many other cryptoids. Well, I think that was a cool story. Could the witness had ran into a dogman with a bad cold that day? Kind of reads that way. Just the way it was having a hard time breathing. I don't know, but something to think about, I guess. Does these strange creatures, the Dogman, Bigfoot, and so on, get sick? If they are real animals, I would say yes. So what do you think on this one? Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think. This Dogman sighting comes out of Rock County, Wisconsin. The witness said that she and three of her friends were out in a field, just hanging out and having a good time just playing and messing around. When they started to hear some strange noises, they said that it sounded like it was a couple of hundred yards off in the field. But at this time, they didn't think too much about it. Then a little bit later, the noises started to get a little louder and seemed to be getting a little closer as well. Then they could hear what sounded like trees or branches breaking. Again, they tried to ignore the noises. But as it turns out, that wasn't the best thing they could have done, as they were about to find out. They heard a noise again close this time. It made them all look up. While looking in the direction of the noise, they saw a strange creature. They said it stood seven to eight feet tall and that this creature was coming straight at them. 
The witness states that the creature stood upright, like a human on two legs, that it acted and moved like a human. It just didn't look like a human. It looked to be a dog or wolf with a snout and fur. They were completely surprised by what they were seeing. The witness states that they had no idea of what was going on. With being surprised and scared, they began to run towards their cars, never looking back to see if the creature was after them. Once they reached their cars, they drove off and never looked back. So what do you think they saw that day? Drop me a comment down below. This dogman sighting comes out of Woodford County, Illinois. The witness says he lives in rural Illinois and that he has been experiencing strange activity and noises around his house for a couple of months now. Then one night his dog woke him around 4 a.m. in the morning and that his dog was really acting up, like she wanted to go out, so he got up to let her out. Now he says that before he let his dog out, that he turned on the back floodlight. Then he peered out through the mini blinds. Now he says he did this because he had a weird feeling. Maybe his dog wasn't acting right, or was it something else giving him this feeling? Now, as he looked into the backyard, he noticed something about 75 feet away from him. It was a wolf, dog, man-like thing. It was standing upright on two legs. It seemed to be looking at his back door. He says that the creature he saw had a proportionally large head while having pointed ears on top. The witness also says he noticed an amber-colored eye shine, stating that its head was canine in appearance, kind of like a German shepherd or even a wolf's head, he stated. Now, it had broad, strong-looking shoulders, and that he was able to see its deltoid muscles. He also noticed that the creature's torso was sunken in towards its abdomen, just like a dog's would be. He also says that the creature didn't seem to have a neck, and with the large head that this creature leaned at around 60 degrees or so. It had thick quad muscles in the front of its thighs that angled forward and tapered down to its small knees. He says this creature's lower legs angled back to hawks, just like a dog's, and that it looked like the creature could lean back on them if it wanted to, so it could leap and jump if needed. He got the impression that this creature could run and jump very well if it needed to. Now the witness says after a few moments of looking at his back door that the creature slowly turned and walked back into the cornfield that's behind his house. Stating that the corn stood about eight feet and that the creature's head was right at the top of it, saying that as the creature was walking away that he could still see the top of its head over the corn. So what do you think this witness saw? Drop me a comment and let me know down below. This dogman sighting comes out of Athens County, Ohio. No date was given in this report. The witness states that him and his girlfriend was driving down a remote country road in early summertime one late evening. That his girlfriend was driving and he was in the passenger seat. And that the sun was starting to set behind them that they had just came around a curve when two deer jumped out into the road in front of them. He said the deer acted like they weren't even there and that they seemed to be focused on something else. His girlfriend hit the brakes, bringing the car to a stop. He said to her, man, that was close. 
Now he states that this is when he looked up into the rearview mirror to see if any more deer was coming. He states that within the red lights of the taillights that he saw something take a big step into the road from the brush that was on the side of the road. He says whatever it was, it landed on its right leg. Now looking at the rear view mirror, he says that he only could see it mid thigh up to its stomach. Now in one motion, it took another step forward while at the same time putting what looked to be a hand down on the trunk to steady itself. Once he saw this, he turned to look at his girlfriend and she was wide eyed and her mouth was open. While being as white as a ghost, he says, and that he could notice her eyes starting to tear up. So he looked back, but by this time it was already gone. He says to attempt to get a better look at this thing, he opened his car door and got out. When he looked, he states that he could see it moving down an embankment. Because of the brush, he says he could only see the creature from its armpits up. It was at least seven foot tall and had very wide shoulders. He states its shoulders were at least one and a half times his and that he has wide shoulders. He says from the last bit of daylight, he could see that this creature was dark colored, black or a dark brown, he states, and that this thing had pointed ears on the top of its head like a dog's, saying its ears weren't overly wide or fuzzy, while its head was kind of dome-shaped with flat sides. It acted like they weren't even there, mainly because he seemed to be focused on the deer. At this time, he was thinking, what in the world was this thing? He states that it looked like some kind of werewolf or wolfman to him. He also said that it was way too big to be a person and that through the whole ordeal, he never got a chance to see its face. So what do you think they saw that night? Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think. This dogman sighting comes out of Michigan. The witness says that he has had three encounters with a wolf-like creature, stating that the first sighting happened on February the 2nd of 2016. It was 4.38 in the morning when he was shoveling his driveway as it was snowing heavily but that he had to get it clear for the propane delivery, saying that there is woods all around his place and that this encounter happened on the south side of his house. Now he was about halfway done with the shoveling when all of a sudden he heard a splash in the creek. He thought it was probably a deer that he spooked, so he stopped working and started scanning the woods and the creek for what he ever made the splash. This is when he says he saw this huge, and when he said huge, he meant huge, wolf-like creature. This creature leapt into the air and took off at an almost supersonic burst of speed, he said, heading to the west, crossing the road in a dead run. So I would say that this creature must have been really fast for the witness to describe it that way, while saying that he had heard branches being snapped right and left. Well, after this creature was out of sight, he says at this point that he just stood there frozen. He was in total shock and amazement at the same time. What he had just seen was amazing. Now for the second encounter with this creature, the witness says that this encounter was on April 11th of 2016, that it was around 3.15 that day. Now he says that he had been really shaken up over the first sighting, and that this was his first trip back into the woods after it. 
He says he was just out walking the property, which consists of 30 acres of hardwood and creek bottom. He was crossing the creek heading east when he caught something moving out of the corner of his eye to the south. He thought at first that he was looking at a black bear, that it was about 30 to 35 yards away from him, saying that it was tearing at the west bank of the creek. Then the witness said that it stood up and that he was frozen again, while it turned around and stood on its two legs. This creature was at least seven to seven and a half feet tall. He says that he was standing in the middle of the creek and absolutely shitting himself. The witness said he didn't want to run, thinking that it might cause this creature to give chase. While well, he said he did bring a firearm with him into the woods, he didn't think it would do much to this creature. Then all of a sudden it raised its head and nose straight up through the air while sniffing a couple of times, then immediately looked to the east. Then it looked at the witness again. Then the witness said it took off with two huge strides heading east, back into the thicket. Now the witness said after this creature cleared the thicket, that it jumped into the trees and was jumping from treetop to treetop. Saying that this creature had black fur, it was matted and smelled horrendous, like rotten guts and rotten fruit, he said. Now the first wolf-like creature he'd seen had grayish-looking fur with a small amount of white mixed in, while they both had pointed ears, with this thing having a snout and gagged-looking teeth, while they both did have tails, but that the second one had much bigger claws than the first one did. Now he says that the third and final sighting happened on May the 2nd of 2016. That it was around 9.20 that evening. He was outside collecting kindling for a fire. He was at the tree line on the south side again when he heard a loud snap. He says that he stopped what he was doing and started listening for any movement. Now again, he said that he was at the tree line, that he doesn't go into the woods anymore. He says after the two sightings he had, that he is just too frightened to step into them. Then he said that he heard rustling sounds, then another snap, saying that this snap didn't sound like a stick or twig snapping. It sounded like to him that it was more of a bone snapping sound. When the sound started to intensify, he says that this is when he turned his flashlight on and started to scan the woods for whatever was making the noise. When his flashlight hit another one of these creatures, while keeping his flashlight on this creature, he says that this thing let out a deep growling sound that literally shook him. That this creature was only about 25 yards from him that its eyes were glowing yellow in color, that it was snarling at him. This is when he says that he started to back up slowly, when this thing stood straight up and bent over something on the ground, picking whatever it had up. He still had his flashlight on this creature at this point, saying that after it picked up whatever it was after, that it turned and looked right at him looking at him as if he had interrupted the creature doing something. Then this creature turned and just walked off towards the south, disappearing into the woods. The witness said that his cousin came over the next day. They walked down to where the creature had been and that they found a hide and only the hide of a white-tailed deer. The witness says that he really believed that the creature was responsible for this, that the creature he saw reminds him of a werewolf. He says that each time he saw one of these creatures that it would get super quiet, and that really freaks him out. 
He says, doing research on the property that it has a lot of Indian barrel sites, with heavy woods and fresh water running throughout it. The witness says that he used to walk the woods four or so times a week, but that after the sightings that he has a hard time just going to the tree line. And that at this point, the woods are out of the question, he says. So that was a good sighting report. So do you believe the witness had a run-in with multiple dog men? Drop me a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. So you can keep up with all of our newest videos. This dogman sighting comes with a twist of sorts. This is truly one of the weirdest sightings I've looked into. This sighting comes out of New York. The witness says that him and two of his friends decided to go camping in the mountains of New York. That there was a dirt road that ran up the mountain. With many little side roads breaking off of this one. With some very good camping sites. They wasn't for sure if they were allowed to camp there. But they were a lot of fire pits, so they knew that many people do camp there. So they picked a spot and set up camp. While they got the fire going, he said that they had a couple of beers. Now as the sun started to go down, they were just sitting around the camp bitching about their women, he said. Now this is when he says everything just went dead quiet saying that all three of them just looked at each other, stating that they couldn't even hear the crickets anymore. He thought maybe a lightning storm was coming, saying you could feel the static in the air, and that all his hair on his back of his neck stood straight up. His friend Jamie started saying that he felt like the air was humming, when all of a sudden they heard a really deep bass noise. Well, they saw a bright light in the distance that flashed up and lit up the entire woods. At least everything they could see, stating that it looked as if it was a really big firework that exploded. For the first few seconds, anyway, he says, that it lasted for probably a minute before it seemed to split up into three or four other lights and shot back into the woods. He says that they could still see all the light still glowing off in the woods. That then there was a large gust of wind that hit them. And that after that, it was gone. He says that after all of this happened, that it smelled like it had just rained. But that it never did. Saying that they didn't even know what to do at this time. So they just decided to wait it out, but nothing else ever happened. They thought that maybe it was a meteor or something, so they just left it alone and went back to bitching about their women again. So it got to be around 2 in the morning and they decided to turn in for the night. The witness said that him and Jamie went to sleep in the tent while Dan wanted to sleep by the fire. Now it was about an hour later and they was being woke by Dan shaking them. As they were waking up, the witness heard Dan say that there was something big watching the campsite. Dan said that this thing was about 50 feet from the fire, that he thought that it might be a bear, but that it was standing up on two legs while bobbing back and forth like it was trying to get a better look at him. Now, as Dan was still talking, they heard a loud scream. The witness said that he had never heard anything like it before, saying that it sounded almost like a big pig being slaughtered while being much deeper in tone. That it was so loud that it made your ears ring. The witness says that the next thing he remembers was hearing three or four of these things running towards the camp. Whatever these creatures were, they started kicking embers from the fire upon the tent. And that they kept running up to the tent and grunting. 
then returning back to the woods, stating that every now and then one of these creatures would scream and pull one of the tent poles, dragging the tent a foot or two, saying that the tent started collapsing on one side and that they didn't know what else to do. So he says they all started screaming as loud as they could saying that only about a minute after they all started screaming, everything went quiet again. Now with it being quiet, they all decided to make a run for the truck. He says once they hit the truck and started it, that in their headlights, they saw one of these creatures standing in the middle of the road. Seeing this thing there, the witness told Jamie to gun it. Now, as if this creature had heard him say this, it puffed up its chest and straightened up. Now, the witness stated that when this creature stood straight, that it had to be around eight feet tall. Saying that this thing had dark gray hair all over its body except for its front, which looked to be white or yellowish around its chest area. While its face looked dog-like, but slightly different, he says he knows what a Bigfoot is supposed to look like, and this thing was way different than that. Now the witness says that this creature didn't even move as they drove at it, that it just stood there looking at them, that they had to swerve around this thing to miss it, saying that he thinks that it wasn't going to move, and that they would have had to run over it. Now they drove down the mountain. Once they made it down, they stopped at a gas company parking lot, saying that they wanted to tell the cops about the sighting, but they didn't know if it was even legal to camp where they were. And they didn't want a DUI since they had been drinking all night. So they just decided to wait on the sun to come up and until they sobered up. Once they were good and sober, they drove back up to where they had been camping. They just wanted to pick up their stuff and go home. But once they got there, all their stuff was gone. Everything, tent and their cooler, nothing was left. The witness said that once they got home, they told some of their friends what had happened to them. But because they had been drinking, they wouldn't believe them. So they said that they just forgot about it. Now, wow, if you ask me, they had one hell of a night. First, maybe a UFO sighting. Then just a few hours later, a dogman sighting. That's just mind-blowing. I'm glad I came across this story. Now, the witness did say that he didn't know if the strange lights had anything to do with these creatures or not. So what do you think? Was this a dogman sighting or some kind of freaky, strange paranormal sighting? This video will consist of two sightings that happened at the same location, but different time of the year and by two different individuals. This Bigfoot sighting comes out of Christian County, Illinois, from May the 5th of 2008. The witness says that him and his dad was heading into Taylorsville, coming in from the southwest, that they were on Route 48. When they came over a small hill, that this is when the sighting happened. Now, the witness says that his dad noticed the creature first that his father started hyperventilating and was staring at something. So he looked back up the road to see what his father was looking at. When he saw this very tall creature, it was standing upright on two legs as he watched this creature walk across the road, that once this thing had made it across the road, that there was a guardrail there and that this creature just stepped over it. Now the witness said that there was a bridge next to where this creature crossed and that after it went over the guardrail, it started to walk underneath the bridge. 
that once the creature got underneath the bridge, it just disappeared out of sight. Now in the follow-up interview from the BFRO report, they said the creature was nine to 10 feet tall, which would make this one one very big boy, I think. Well, its body was huge and very muscular looking to the witnesses. Also that the shoulder width was massive, that the creature was black in color, while they didn't see the creature's face. Now the BFRO site says that there was another sighting at the same area later in that same year. So could this creature be using this bridge as cover? Could it have a nest or something it calls home close by? Maybe there's paths just cuts across and goes under the bridge. Maybe multiple Bigfoot creatures uses this path throughout the year. I don't know about that. So what do you think about this sighting? Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think. This next Bigfoot report is the other sighting that I mentioned. It's from September 28th of 2008, out of Christian County as well. The witness says that the wife of his brother was driving on Route 48, about two miles from Taylorsville, near the Samagon River Bridge. And she said that a very large and hairy creature came up and out of the ditch and walked across the road in front of her car saying that after it crossed the road that it came to a guardrail and that this creature stepped over it like it wasn't even there she said like it was nothing that it continued to walk off back into the woods where it disappeared well i guess these two sightings are very much the same in many ways don't you think now the size is very different in the two sides this witness said the creature was seven foot tall, with the body being huge and very muscular, while the color of this creature was a dark brown, saying that it walked at a regular pace, that it wasn't in any hurry or rush because of her or her car. This creature didn't even look at her or the car as she approached it. The witness said she didn't see its face, that the creature just looked ahead to where it was going. So, wow, these two sightings are very close to one another now, aren't they? Now, knowing that there is a river there, I wonder if they use this path to go up and down to the river. Maybe getting water, or maybe hunting close to the water source. Seem to be two different animals seen crossing almost in the same area. One being a black while the other was brown. At two different times of the year as well. So these two sighting reports makes me think that they may be or have been a family group in this area. Or just a well used path. So what do you think about these two sightings? Does it give you any questions or thoughts about them? Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you might be thinking. So till next time, stay safe and have a great week. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you can keep up with all of our latest videos. And thanks for watching those endless mysteries.